Panagdait sa tanan, and welcome back to our Contemporary Philippine Arts from the Regions. I am Sir Justin Romer S. Monteron. You can call me Sir Justin or Sir Romer. Our lesson for today is all about art promotion and preservation. But before we proceed to the discussion, let me pose a question. Why is it important that we promote and preserve the artwork of our country? Try to comment your answer below for five minutes. You may pause the video now. I will assume that you already had your answer. Going back to the question, we need to promote and preserve the artworks of our country for the following reasons. First, art is a national heritage that is essential in building the nation and ensuring democracy. How can we build the nation and ensure democracy through artwork? If we go back to our previous discussion, we learned that art is not limited to drawing and painting alone. An example of artistic expression is dancing. By dancing, we can meet lots of people. To be more specific, locals in our country, which later would become our friends, we can establish good relationship with them. By that, we can have a team building. That is one way of building the nation. What about ensuring democracy? Democracy refers to freedom, having options to choose from. In the world of art, there are different artistic expressions that we can choose from. By that, we can practice democracy. Aside from that, through artwork, we can interpret anything that we want, which is also a form of democratic privilege that we can use. The second reason is, art forms remind people of the origin, histories, struggles, and triumphs of the nation, especially those artworks that represent history of our country. So these are the reasons, the main reasons why we need to promote and preserve artworks, the artworks of our country. To make sure that the artworks are well preserved and promoted in our country, here are the different organizations. Again, the goals and the purposes of these organizations is to make sure that the Philippine artwork is always promoted and preserved. The first one is the NCCA or the National Commission for Culture and Arts. Basically, this is the head or the overall policymaking body among those presented earlier. They are in charge to make policies, policies that is related to the preservation, development, and promotion of Philippine arts and culture. The next one is the Cultural Center of the Philippines from the word center. This is actually a platform or somewhat a venue wherein the performances and visual arts are being exhibited. This is actually a venue or a stage for performance. The next one is National Historical Commission of the Philippines. It, from the word historical, it will be catering the histories in our country. Anything that has to do with histories such as historical sites or artwork. Examples of historical sites that are in relation to our artwork are the architectures, such as the old Catholic Church. National Museum of the Philippines, I believe that kailan at tatanan kung usan ng museum, it has archaeological artifacts, national treasures, and rare specimens found and produced in our country. So, aside from treasures and artifacts, na put shy mga products that are produced by the country. The next one is the National Library of the Philippines. Going back to our definition for artwork, language and words can also be considered as an art. That's why we have the National Library included in this list. So, this NLP is actually a home for rare books and documents that was published from a very long time ago in the Philippines. The next one, National Archives of the Philippines. From the word archives, um, similar to the previous slide, but it focuses mainly on old documents starting from the Spanish era. Any document na nagamit sa una are, can be found in the National Archives of the Philippines. This is a collection of documents. 
Komisyon sa Wikang Filipino. From the word itself, Wikang Filipino, this is an organization that will make sure that the Filipino language will always be preserved, promoted, and always be used in our country. The Philippines has lots of language. Because of that, there is a tendency that the Filipino language will be forgotten. But since we have this Commission sa Wikang Filipino, they will make sure that our national language will not be forgotten. An example of doing this is having the Filipino subject in our curriculum. And that ends the discussion for this lesson. I do hope that you learned a lot today. And please do not forget to check your Google Classroom for our activities and be sure to submit that before the deadline. If you have questions, you can always contact the teacher. Thank you class and see you next meeting.